The headlines were certainly eye-catching. The ozone hole over the Antarctic is one of the largest and deepest in years. It's been particularly deep this year, amongst the deepest over the last 15 years. What's going on? Well, in order for ozone to be depleted, conditions need to be really cold. As the stratosphere falls below minus 78 degrees Celsius, chlorine and bromine containing substances created by industrial activity start to accumulate. But they don't react until you add light. And of course, that's what happens every year after Antarctica's winter darkness. As the sun returns, it releases energy that causes the bromine and chlorine atoms to become chemically active, destroying ozone molecules in the process. And that's why the hole in the ozone layer grows every year from about mid-August to October. Last year, the stratosphere was relatively warm, so the hole was what scientists called unusually small and short-lived. This year, not so much. So during winter, we had a very strong polar vortex over the Antarctic continent. The polar vortex varies from year to year. This year, it's been particularly strong. So that resulted in a colder stratosphere and more ozone depletion. On September 20th, NASA recorded the hole's extent at an area of 25 million square kilometres, the largest since 2015. Now, given the ozone layer protects us from damaging UV radiation, a hole in the layer is indeed a problem. Scientists first spotted the hole in the early 1980s. They sounded the alarm and, get this, the world leaders actually listened. Within a few years, a global agreement had been reached called the Montreal Protocol, banning the production of ozone-depleting chemicals that had been widely used in things like household sprays and fridges. And it worked. Despite this year's result, the overall trend has shown the hole getting smaller. Without the protocol, though, we'd be looking at a complete destruction of the ozone layer over Antarctica, and this would grow in time uh, towards Australia and towards the tropics. So the protocol helps save the ozone layer, but we now know that it also helps slow global warming. That's because CFCs, those ozone-depleting chemicals that the protocol banned, are potent greenhouse gases. Australian researchers recently found that the agreement slowed the rate of warming by as much as 25%. In other words, without Montreal, average global temperatures would now be even higher. Shows what's possible when leaders act decisively, right? And yes, the world is capital F fatigued right now by the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's not the only crisis we're facing. So can we step up again in the fight against climate change? I think the pandemic is hopefully something we look back on in, in a couple of years or a couple of decades and say that was the the moment that the planet reset its course of carbon emissions. Um, if it's not, we're going to have a, a, a catastrophic level of climate change that will dwarf the cost of this pandemic. I'm Nula Hafner. See you next time on Global Science. Remember to hit subscribe for our regular videos. And while you're here, check out our past episodes.